The biggest AI news last week was the US Senate hearing on AI regulation, with Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, becoming the spotlight. You make a lot of money, do you? I make, no. Uh, I'm paid enough for health insurance. I have no equity in OpenAI. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. You need a lawyer or an agent. I, I'm doing this because I love it. This hearing is where the government people consult the key industry figures about AI and Sam Ullman even proposed licenses for building AI, which a lot of people did not like. This is kind of complemented with the infamous leak document from Google, We Have No Moat and Neither Does OpenAI, which talks about how OpenAI and Google will soon be overtaken by open source models and got some people memeing about it as a result. While The Onion being the biggest troll as usual, the EU is regulating AI even more now, but they seem to be making exemptions for open source research to boost AI development, there is some really interesting regulations they are putting down. Also now good news for open source research, Nvidia just released the 4060 series that comes in different VRAM sizes, and price that is much cheaper than other GPU with high VRAMs. People started to make speculations and rumors about new GPT-4 features just because the UI has an empty slot. So of course, people memed about it. But what's actually new for GPT-4 is that browsing and plugins are all available to paid users now, so no more private beta BS, and ChatGPT now has an official app on iOS. Google's new large language model, Palm 2, which was announced two weeks ago, is leaked to have 360 billion parameters and trained on 3.6 trillion tokens. And they also published a technical report a few days ago. You can check it out if you're interested. And of course, there are people that takes care of their priorities. Oh, on the Topic of priorities, another week has gone by and Neil Wong has spiced up his multi-frame rendering workflow and it looks even better than before. You can check out my old video for more context, but this is just nuts. I'll link the full video in the description. Skybox Blockade Labs was the most popular AI app last week. It lets you draw in a 3D plane and generate 3D textures based on your sketch and your textual description. You can then view the result with a 360 camera. And I guess the trick is that it doesn't let you move around because the 3D illusion would break. Maybe generating something with space coherency will be something they are aiming to do in the long run, which sounds pretty cool, because building a scene or an interactive map with only scribbles and text would definitely be something exciting to see for game devs and entertainment. You can try it now for free on their website, not sponsored by the way. Dragon, <clears throat> I mean Dragon, is another Gen research that is being published and people are loving it. For those who are not familiar with Gen, Gen is like the nemesis of diffusion models and it was kind of forgotten due to the difficulty in generating realistic images with text using Gen. However, Gen is known for being able to generate extremely realistic images, and here Dragon is capable of doing interactive point-based image editing, which is something we definitely would not see in diffusion models. Keep in mind that image editing for Gens is made possible through latent embeddings, which means embedding the input image into the image latent space. So the image that we're actually editing will look slightly different than the input image due to the limited latent space. Be aware of fake historical events because now it's very easy to fake stories with the help of ChatGPT and Midjourney, and faked historical events are one of the hardest to verify since some facts are just too obscure for you to verify yourself, and there is always an excuse for the image quality to be bad. In this case, Twitter's community note came in handy to debunk the image. More insane multi-frame rendering for 2D characters with extreme coherency. Just look at the hair. How is it being generated so cleanly? Oh my god. These Japanese and Chinese people are seriously making some of the craziest progress in the stable diffusion generated videos aspect. Stability AI released Stable Studio, which is an open source version of Dream Studio. Google is adding text to code generation for sales and collab, which is pretty neat. And for some reason, there's a lot of AI robot announcements this week. The demo for Tesla's Optimus was released. We got a glimpse into Sanctuary AI's general purpose robot Phoenix. Jazai arms that gives human extra limbs. Unitree's Go One's robot dog that can speed up to 17 kilometers per hour to do what exactly? I don't know. All of their demos are in the description. Lima, which is Llama 65B plus 1000 supervised samples that's able to give GPT-4 and BAR level of performance or I mean that's what Young Lacoon claimed and if that's true closed source research really does not have modes do they? We got a few more audio and speech related research too. Meta's MMS massively multilingual speech that can do speech to text and text to speech in over 1000 languages and can recognize over 4000 languages with half the word error rate of whisper. And Google's Soundstorm which can generate 30 seconds of audio in 0.5 seconds on a TPU v4. Did you hear about Google's paper on Soundstorm? Um, no, I must have missed it. What's, what's it about? 
Well, it's a parallel decoder for efficient audio generation. Uh, so it can even be oh, used yeah. to generate dialogues. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like this one was generated by Soundstorm. Wait, what? <laughs> what? And yeah, I think we're done for the week. Let's wrap up with this fake AI TikToker account that got a massive following by claiming to have lost a lot of weight and 47.4K likes. Oh my god, the human race is so hopeless. Simping over an AI losing weight is our new low. But anyways, if you want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe so I don't know if you guys like it or not. And I'll see you all in the next one.